Thank you very much, Senator Erica. To Senator Milne. Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Uh, I rise today to oppose uh, this legislation by the Abbott government, which is uh, the biggest systemic assault on the environment since the time that the Commonwealth took any responsibility for environmental decisions at the time of the Franklin Dam. And why do I say that? Because up until now we have fought any number of environmental battles around Australia in the states, and it has been the Commonwealth that has given us the opportunity to expose what can only be described as corruption at the state level, which have enabled any number of developers to get what they want at the cost of the environment. Now, in the mid-1990s, the Howard government came up with the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. There were many of us at the time who opposed that legislation because it was so weak, and it's what's fundamentally wrong with the EPBC Act is that it gives the minister way too much discretion, and it has allowed over the years many, many uh, ministers to turn their back on serious information uh, which jeopardise projects when they've chosen not to do it. And most recently, we had under the former Labor government the minister Tony Burke, who did not take account of the expert advice he was given on threatened species when it came to the Tarkine. That matter was able to go to court. Now we have a situation where the Abbott government has said that it is not interested in second-guessing the states or local government in assessing any claims by developers when state governments or local governments give them the blind eye, and instead the Commonwealth will just tick them off. It is utterly and absolutely disgraceful and dismantles our national system of environmental regulation and planning approval. And what we will have in its place is a framework for the systemic destruction of our environment, readying the ground for degradation of our land, water and precious native species by vested interests and undermining of our world heritage areas into the bargain. If this bill passes the Senate, it would see Australia's environmental standards drop as those state governments which nurture developments get the right to tick them off in an uncritical way. As I've said, our current system has been in place for quite some time and it is imperfect, but at least it's ensured that many of our very special national places and icons survive to this day. It is because of the Commonwealth laws that we have the Great Barrier Reef uh, protected and stopped from being scarred with oil rigs. We've got state governments being stopped from compromising water security with coal seam gas development, and we have prevented the extinction of some of our precious wildlife, although I add Australia has an appalling reputation when it comes to extinctions, and we are currently facing more extinctions, not only because of climate change but because of habitat loss and disease and invasive species. And what an indictment on this country that our koala uh, is uh, threatened by a failure to look after its habitat by disease and, of course, by climate consequences. When I got into politics in 1989, it was because the Tasmanian government of Robin Gray was so determined to promote North Broken Hills pulp mill project. It was a native forest-based project using elemental chlorine in the bleaching. They were going to dump it into Bass Strait, dump all that uh, polluting water with organochlorines into Bass Strait, and the Tasmanian government loved it and was so in the pocket of North Broken Hill at the time, Mr Acting Deputy President, uh, that North Broken Hill recalled the Tasmanian parliament on its own letterhead for doubt removal legislation to remove any doubt as to who was running the state, who would determine the environmental laws, and it was so bad that the graffiti around Tasmania was vote one North Broken Hill and cut out the middleman. And I might say that around Australia at the moment there are plenty of people out there who would be saying vote one Whitehaven and cut out the middleman, vote one Santos, 
cut out the middleman. Vote one, Adani, cut out the middleman. It could go right round the country uh, and do it. Vote one, Woodside, and cut out the middleman when it comes to James Price Point. It is happening already, but at least we have some recourse with the Commonwealth legislation. Under this legislation, there will be no recourse. We will just be handing over environmental powers to the states and giving the tick to corruption. And I reiterate, a tick to corruption. Look at ICAC in New South Wales. Just look at it. It's exposing week in, week out ministers taking donations to tick off projects, to tick off coal mines, coal seam gas, to tick off property development, tick off whatever they like, week in, week out, brown paper bags. Why do we think it wouldn't happen if uh, we have a situation where the people ticking off on the environmental considerations are the very same people who are receiving the brown paper bags with no Commonwealth oversight? That is a disaster for this country. I want to go to Tasmania. As I mentioned a little while ago, that was the situation with the government of Robin Gray. And, uh, and of course, it has only remained the same since with the guns pulp mill. And I go through there that the guns pulp mill was first dreamt up by John Gay and Paul Lennon in a restaurant on the back of an envelope where they chose to get it together and promote that pulp mill. When it was clear that the planning scheme in Tasmania, that the planning and consideration might find that the project was wanting, the Premier of the day, Paul Lennon, withdrew the project from the proper planning process because uh, John Gay and Guns wanted it taken out of the assessment. And the only recourse we had was to come to the Commonwealth and say, look on earth what is going on in Tasmania. I can say that we weren't particularly impressed by the response from either uh, Malcolm Turnbull or Peter Garrett, who were the relevant ministers uh, at the time under successive governments. But at least we had the opportunity of taking it to the Commonwealth. And there is no doubt whatsoever if this went through, then the Tarkine would just be opened up to mining and logging willy-nilly. Now we've got a situation where the Tarkine is Australia's largest remaining tract of cool temperate rainforest and it's now becoming a mining precinct. It will put our Tasmanian devil, for example, already uh, critically endangered, under greater pressure. And we have again a situation there where the Heritage Council, National Heritage Council, came out and said it needed to be protected. And the Federal Minister of the Day came out and said, with Paul Howes from the union movement at that time, standing there saying, we have chosen to ignore the Commonwealth environmental law. We've chosen to go against what we're expected to do because we want those mines to open in the Tarkine. That was appalling, but at least there was some transparency about it. The Tasmanian government will have no transparency. They will just tick off on any mine in the Tarkine any time. And let me tell you uh, so much for the arguments about jobs and economic benefit. Yes, we had the former minister, uh, Tony Burke, and again Paul Howes, standing there telling Tasmanians in Braddon, in, ahead of the last election, this would be a bonanza. This would be jobs and returns to Tasmania. And what have we had since? Shree Minerals dug a great big hole in the ground and are not viable. Not viable. And what are we left with? Nothing. A great big hole in the ground, no money to rehabilitate the place, and the Premier of Tasmania at the time, Lara Giddings, giving them a royalties holiday. They're laughing as they're sitting there, and we're left with a great big hole in the Tarkine. And we now have exactly the same thing with Venture Minerals, Riley Creek, exactly the same thing. And yet the people who stand there and let this environmental vandalism occur wander off to the next thing and just pretend it hasn't happened. Well, I can tell you that under the Liberal government in Tasmania, you will see the Tarkine ticked off for any mining anywhere, any logging anywhere, anyhow, and it would just be complete disaster. And of course, uh, I would have zero confidence uh, that large business, any business in fact, would exert such influence over the Tasmanian government or any local government in Tasmania that you would see not only environmental destruction but stupidity in terms of giving them royalties holidays so that they don't even pay anything and the community is left with the mess uh, of coming out of that. 
and the only good thing that I can say in relation to the long saga of guns and the former Tasmanian Premier Paul Lennon and the appalling processes that went on with that is that John Gay was found guilty of, in, of insider trading in relation to the guns pulp mill. He was only fined $50,000, which was an affront to everyone around Australia who's trying to get serious on white-collar crime. And I'm very pleased to say that ASIC is now pursuing John Gay for the $3 million he made on insider trading uh, on the uh, guns pulp mill proposal. But it's not just pulp mills, it's fish farms as well. They're being approved around Tasmania, again, uh, with cursory glance. There was an advisory panel originally that considered new farm licences or expansion applications, taking into account community environmental concerns. But as soon as this panel recommended against an expansion of a fish farm, the minister of the day in Tasmania changed the act to give himself the power to approve such applications. Who is going to tell me that it will be any different under this particular act? And coming to Queensland, I've had my colleague, uh, Senator Waters, outlining what's going on in Queensland, but it is just disgraceful. The Great Barrier Reef has been ticked off by the Newman government as a highway for coal. They ticked off the Abbott Point uh, coal to, uh, dredging to dump into the Great Barrier Reef uh, Marine Park. They have even approved the Adani Carmichael coal mine in the Galilee Basin against the Independent Expert Scientific Committee on CSG and Coal. Uh, and the the uh, committee was worried about the impacts of the Great Artesian Basin, but was Campbell Newman, the Premier of Queensland, worried? Not at all. Just ticking off on that. And what's more, uh, the Campbell Newman government was uh, offering multinationals discount royalties for opening up the Galilee Basin. So any state government offering discount royalties is not going to be doing anything to seriously assess the environmental impacts. And of course, it's going to get us into serious difficulty under the World Heritage Convention because UNESCO is going to see straight through this. And as a state party, Australia has an obligation to uphold our responsibility under the World Heritage Convention. And I can tell you all this dumping into the reef, these uh, ports up and down uh, the reef are certainly not consistent with our international obligations. And the former chief scientist of the Australian Institute of Marine Science has said that decisions had to be that the decision to allow the dumping had to be a political decision. It's not supported by the science at all. I was absolutely flabbergasted when I heard about uh, that decision. But we've also got with uh, the Newman government uh, the vegetation uh, management framework. Uh, is to be changed so that it would allow for clearing of 700,000 hectares of forest and woodland. So we've got this outrageous scenario in Queensland already such that Tony Fitzgerald, the corruption fighter, said that Queensland risks going back to the dark ages, that access can now be purchased, patronage is dispensed, mates and supporters are anointed and appoint, sorry, uh, anointed and retired politicians exploit their connections to obtain success fees for deals between business and government. Does anyone seriously think in Queensland the environment would be taken into account or seriously? But let me get to uh, New South Wales and Whitehaven uh, coal mine. What a disgrace again, where we've got ICAC coming out and showing clear corruption. We can't trust state governments with transparency and the public interest. And with Whitehaven, again, this offset policy that is already there is being exploited. And what has the Commonwealth done about it? Not very much. What will the state do about it? Zero. So Whitehaven comes out and puts in a, a false uh, claim that it has got an offset for the uh, white box gum grassy woodland when there's only 0.1 per cent uh, in its uh, original range there. And what we've now got is a scenario where it was proven that Whitehaven, Whitehaven misled the Commonwealth. Why wasn't the Commonwealth taking legal action against Whitehaven? Because after we went to a lot of trouble at the Commonwealth level, Whitehaven has had to nominate some other blocks, and that was considered to be an appropriate response instead of going after them for white-collar crime, which we should have done. 
But nevertheless, at least it got exposed at the Commonwealth level. In New South Wales, it would have been buried because, as we know, that ICAC heard allegations that Nathan Tinkler, the owner of the Malls Creek mine, during most of its assessment phase attempted to buy influence with politicians using prohibited donations to subvert the planning process in relation to a number of developments. Now, I really am appalled, and I congratulate everyone who's standing up for the Laird Forest, standing up uh, for the environment against corruption in New South Wales and against the state government's shonky uh, um, environmental assessment processes. And again to World Heritage in Tasmania. There was the Tasmanian government, supported by the Abbott government in this case, removing 74,000 hectares of our high conservation value forest from a World Heritage area. And, of course, Australia was held to account in the World Heritage Committee, and at this point those forests are now safe. But hand over all environmental decision-making powers to Tasmania, and I can tell you that the Hodgman, the Hodgman government would be stupid enough to submit yet another application to take those forests out of the World Heritage Area and humiliate Australia again. You cannot trust state governments to look after areas of national environmental significance. They never have, from the Franklin, from the Barrier Reef, uh, from, from any of our major World Heritage Areas. You simply can't trust the states and you would trust local government even less when it comes to those major development proposals. This is a recipe for more corruption, more brown paper bags, certain environmental uh, adverse impact and destruction of forests, of reefs, of the environment, any which way you look at it, and that is why we are standing here so strongly opposing it. And when it comes to threatened species, let's look at that. The handover of environmental powers uh, looks likely to exacerbate uh, extinction, particularly with the leadbeater's possum in Victoria. It's been reduced to fewer than a thousand animals, but the Victorian government insists on continuing to cut down the trees that the animals rely on. And do you think that handing over environmental powers to Victoria is going to protect the leadbeater's possum? Well, of course it won't do it. In fact, an audit of threatened species and planning laws across all Australian jurisdictions by the Australian Network of Environmental Defenders Officers found that no state or territory biodiversity or planning laws currently meet the suite of federal environmental standards necessary to effectively and efficiently protect biodiversity, particularly in relation to fast tracking. The audit found that state and territory provisions for speeding up approvals effectively override threatened species laws in all jurisdictions. So the implementation of this legislation would certainly drive many more plants and animals and birds, like the swift parrot, for example, to extinction. We will see an assault on places of world heritage significance, places that are of outstanding universal value to humankind. Now, we are not going to stand here and let that happen. We need in this country not just to maintain environmental laws with the Commonwealth, but we actually need much stronger laws. In my view, we need a new act which recognises the assault that the environment is under and which needs to be strengthened and which needs to have a trigger uh, for climate change as well, because not only do we need to protect so many of our precious places and species around the country, but we need to recognise that we need to build connectivity. We need to build corridors so that in, as climate change advances, we've got some hope of actually building resilience in populations that are under pressure, plant, animal uh, and so on. So we need a serious engagement with the environment. After all, if you don't protect the environment, you have nothing left. It is what sustains us with life on earth. It is under pressure as never before, with massive population explosion, massive habitat reduction, massive pollution. We are seeing our natural world under assault as never before, and now is the time to protect it not sell it out in this country by handing over to state governments the ability to destroy it and take money in brown paper bags at the same time.